Good evening, YouTube family. This is K Steps with Undiluted TV. And I'm coming to you because I want to bring you <coughs> an update and a little bit more information on the Albert Wilson case. That's the, 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 the young black man that was <laughs> charged with 12 years for a rape that included absolutely no sexual intercourse. Um, I want to bring you a little update on that because a subscriber of mine commented and gave me another link that provided a little bit more information, that provided an actual breakdown of the timeline and uh, provided more information about Albert and, and what actually took place that night. And I want to bring you this information and I also want to bring you this link, this website where you can go and you can see this timeline breakdown and you could actually donate to the cause to, to have something done about this. Because again, as I said in the video yesterday, this is just absolutely ridiculous. Um, the, the website is www.freealbertwilson. And it's spelled just like it sounds. Free, F-R-E-E-A-L-B-E-R-T. W I L S O N dot com free Albert Wilson dot com. And again, like I said, you can go on this website and it's, it's already linked in the description box. It will be linked in the de description box and it's also linked in the description box in the last video we did on him. But you can go here, you can see the breakdown, you can um, read about him and his family and his background, and you could also donate to the cause. So I want to get right into this. Um, first thing it says is September 10th, 2016. And this was a family day weekend in Lawrence, Kansas, which is a yearly tra uh, tradition where students and family members and friends and all can come together to celebrate the start of the new school year. Thousands of people are visiting and they're visiting this area that's known as the Triangle. And uh, that night is, is, is where they all met up at this famous bar called the Jayhawk. And it's located within this triangle area. 1057. According to the affidavit obtained from the court, Mr. Wilson and his friend are seen on camera entering the bar at this time. Advertised as a 21 and older bar, the Hawk has gained an infamous reputation for allowing the entry of underage kids using fake IDs. This is what Mr. Wilson is seen doing to gain entry into the bar. So we already know that he used the fake, that he had to use a fake ID. So at this time, at the time of this incident, he was also underage. He was 20. On the other side of the bar, according to the testimony of Daniel Carroll, a witness that worked at the Hulk and as seen on video, the accuser, her cousin and him walk into the Hulk without getting carded or stopped. All this occurred under the management of Sam Amron, also another witness in this case. So they've got this man who's allowing all of these underage kids into his bar, knowing that they're using fake IDs. They're allowing this man who, who by now the bar should be closed down if you know that, that all of these underage people are being served. At this point, the, the bar should be closed down. But they're actually allowing him to be a witness in this case. As the night goes on, Mr. Wilson is, enjoy, is enjoying his night like any other student in the local bar. He did not know that an interaction with, that had sparked up with a girl in the line to the boom boom room would change his life forever and the, the boom boom room was a downstairs room in the basement and this is where the kids went and they claimed that just about anything went on in the boom boom room you know you could get down in the boom boom room <laughs> the accuser and her husband met albert and his friend the accuser pulls his arm as they head into the uh, into the dance room. But Mr. Wilson hesitates in order to ensure his friend was coming in as well. This was seen on video and heard during testimony presented at the court. So let's make sure that we understand this. 
Mr. Wilson and his friend are in line to go into the boom boom room. And so is the accuser and her cousin. And it's be and it's and it and it's shown on video footage. You can see this. And at one point, she's pulling, this is the accuser, she's pulling his arm to get him to come on into the boom boom room, the dance room, but he's hesitating because he wants to make sure that his friend is also coming in. So this is the interaction that's going on between him and her. Him and the accuser. Wilson testified that he now lives in Wichita, but was a full-time KU student at the time. After getting his associate's degree at a community college, that night he and a friend met the girl and her cousin in line to go into the Boom Boom Room, the dark crowded dance floor in the basement of the Jayhawk Club. Surveillance footage from the bar shown in court Wednesday shows her pulling him by the hand into the Boom Boom Room. So, so we see her in being the aggressor. Let's put it that way. We see her right. At, we see her at this point being the aggressor. But now, remember, she was supposed to be so drunk and so intoxicated that she didn't know what she was doing. She was supposed to, by this time, because remember, according to testimony, her and her cousin and some other women had already been drinking at a, a, at a sorority party. So by the time they get to the, the, the Hulk, the Jayhawk, whatever they call this club, she was already supposed to be intoxicated. And by this time, so in, intoxicated that she didn't know what, what she was doing. But we see her here being the aggressor, and she's the one pulling him. She's the one that's got him by the hand, pulling him into the boom boom room. Okay, let's go on. Once in the dance room, Mr. Wilson admits to having kissed and touched the accuser. They were in the boom, 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 where, as you know from the video, pretty much anything goes, Lowry said. Now, Lowry it was, was his court-appointed attorney. She's kissing him, and he's kissing her back. Now, that's what's going on in the boom, boom, room, which was the dance room. 12.15 a.m. As seen on video, Mr. Wilson and the accuser are seen leaving the bar together and walking down 14th Street hand in hand. Now, they are walking to his apartment or to his house or to his home or wherever down 14th Street hand in hand. And this is being seen on video. Other cameras show the pair walking hand in hand around the corner and down the 14th Street Hill towards Wilson's house, two blocks away at 1340 Kentucky Street. While the girl previously testified that she drunkenly stumbled, Wilson says she stumbled on a sidewalk crack on the steep hill. When he asked if she was okay, he said that she jumped on him, wrapping her arms and legs around him and continuing to kiss him. Now you got to remember, in the club, Leading into the boom boom room, she was the aggressor. She could be seen as the aggressor. She could be seen as the one that was leading most of this interaction. Because it talks about her pulling him into the, 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 the dance room. And he kind of hesitated a little bit and looked back because he wanted to make sure that his friend, his homeboy was coming in too. While consent was never verbalized, Wilson said, he believed they were headed to his place to have sex and that she was on board. The girl testified that she told Wilson no, but he testified that she never said that. Okay, even up until this point. And right now, we, we just got them walking hand in hand out of the bar and to his house. Just what we've heard so far. Does it appear that she said no to anything at this point? Does it appear that at this point she has said no to anything? Right. Now, according to Google Maps, it takes approximately four to five minutes to reach Mr. Wilson's home once you leave the Hulk, depending on the conditions of the area. According to the affidavit, Mr. Wilson's friend, Mr. Wilson's friend received a call from Mr. Wilson at 12.17. Okay, now they leave the bar. 
at 1215 to head to his house. At 217, his friend receives a call from him. 1220, home of Mr. Wilson. Using the assumption from Google Maps, Mr. Wilson and the accuser would have reached his home at around two at around 1221 at, at around 1220. According to the affidavit, Mr. Wilson's friend calls Mr. Wilson back at 1221. <laughs> Also, according to the affidavit, around approximately 12.30 a.m. the morning of September 11, 2016, Mr. Wilson calls his friend back. Mr. Wilson is seen walking back with the accuser, then meeting up with his friend and leaving. Using the assumption from Google Maps, Mr. Wilson and the accuser would have left his home around 12.25 in order to make it back to the club by 1230. Okay, now we just read that he arrived at his house at 1220. So according to how long Google Maps says that it takes to get back and forth from the club to his house. Hold on just a minute. I want to make sure we you hear this real good. Now, according to Google Maps, again, it takes 45 minutes to get to where Mr. Wilson lived at that time from the club, from the Hawk, the Jayhawk, whatever they call it. Because we, we, we in, in one article, they're calling it the, 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 the Jayhawk. Here, they're calling it the Hawk. But it takes 45 minutes considering the conditions. Okay, well, this is after 12 o'clock at night, so it's probably not a whole lot of people out, and they're walking. <laughs> so if they arrived at his house at 12.20, they were back at the club by 12.30. That's a space of 10 minutes. So that means they arrived at his house sometime around, they arrived at his house at 12.20. They had to have left his house at 12.25 in order to be back at the club by 12.30. So again, that shows, just like we've already reported, that shows that they were only at his house for five minutes. Video shows, videos show the two returning to the bar, this time not hand in hand, about 15 to 20 minutes after they left. Now, they would have left the bar at 1215 because remember, it takes 45 minutes to get to his house. OK, so if they left the bar at 1215, then according to Google Maps, it would have been about 1220 when they got to his house. They arrive at his house at 1220. They arrive back at the club at 1230. It takes at most five minutes to walk back to the club. So that means that they were at his house from 1220 to 1225. They left his house around 1225. They had to in order to be back at the club at 1230. Okay, let's continue. Wilson estimated they were only actually inside his room for about five minutes. He said the girl came upstairs with him, laid on the bed, and they continued to make out. He said he never removed her clothes and that he did not have sex with her. Wilson said he got a where you at text and a missed call from his friend at the bar and decided to go see what he needed. When he told the girl he was leaving, she gave him a mean look, a mad look, and they both walked back toward the bar, Wilson said. Okay, so now remember, they were only in the house for about five minutes. No clothes were ever removed and no sex was ever had. All 
October, October 2016, in October. Now, this all took place September the 10th and the 11th. That night of September the 10th into the wee, the wee hours of September the 11th. So by 12.30, 12.31, 12.32, somewhere in there, they had separated. And they had gone their separate ways. So their actual physical alone time from the time they left the bar at 12.15 until the time they got back to the bar at 12.30 was 15 minutes. And 10 of those 15 minutes were spent walking back and forth from the bar to the house and back from the house to the bar. So their actual alone time was only five minutes. Okay, now like, like I said, that was September the 11th, the September the 10th into September the 11th. In October 2016, so, you know, give or take maybe a month later, a 17-year-old reported to Lawrence Police that she'd been raped by a man she met at a bar near the University of Kansas, by the, by the University of Kansas campus. The teen, put, the teen told police she was very drunk when the man, whose name she wasn't sure of, isolated her from her friend, walked her to a nearby home, raped her, then walked her back to the bar isolated her from her friend but we've got to remember who was the aggressor at the bar she was the one grabbing and pulling on him and trying to pull him into the boom boom room according to him and it doesn't say whether the video shows this or not but according to him when she stumbled on the crack when they were going down the hill headed to his house and he asked if she was okay she jumped up on him wrapping her arms and legs around him and all this and continued to kiss him okay and i think it was i think it was the vibe article yeah i think it was the vibe article where it says that the next day was when she told her mom and it was after she told her mom what happened it was after she had a conversation with her mom that she went to the hospital and had the swab test and all of this okay November 2016. On November 18, 2016, police found Wilson at home and took him to the police station for an interview. When police showed him surveillance photos from the bar, Wilson said it was him in the pictures. <coughs> October 2017. Skipped almost, skip almost a year later. That report and a chain of police report and uh, police work that followed eventually led to the arrest of Albert N. Wilson, 21 of Lawrence, according to the affidavit prepa prepared by police in support of his arrest. Wilson was charged April the 11th in Douglas County District Court with one count of rape, a felony. November 2017, on Tuesday, following Wilson's preliminary hearing, Judge Sally Picorno, Picorni ordered him bound over for trial on two counts of rape. Now, originally, he was only charged with one. On two counts of rape, the original count from the allegation that he raped the teen at his home and an additional count from the allegation that he lifted her skirt and assaulted her inside the bar without consent. Evidence showed the teen was intoxicated enough that she was unable to consent and such inability would have been apparent to Wilson, the judge ruled. Okay. Now, we got her so intoxicated that she unable to consent and she just, you know, she just all upset that she just all messed up and all drunk and all of that. This is according to the judge. But we've got video of her in the club 
not too intoxicated to grab hold to him and try and, and, and pull him into the boom boom room behind her. We've got her being the aggressor. The teen repeatedly said no to Wilson, the judge said. Now, just like that, the judge the, the, already, not allegedly repeatedly said no. Not according to the witness, not according to the victim, she repeatedly said no. But it's just, it's just been putting out there like, like it's a fact by the judge. And this is before they even go to trial. This is just simply after the preliminary hearing. The team repeatedly said no to Wilson, the judge said. This is the judge talking. Based on the teen's level of intoxication and Wilson being larger than her, she had no way to actively to actively resist or to get away from him, the judge said. So see the case was already over. When you get when you got a judge talking like this before the case even goes to trial, when you got a judge adding on extra charges, when there is no evidence to support those charges. His case was already over. She could have just went on head on and sentenced him right then. Because as you can see, this is what she's saying that she's already found. This is not, she. what was the point in, in a trial? A trial is supposed to be a fact finding mission. You go through the whole trial phase for the purpose of finding facts and then presenting those facts to the jury. As far as the judge is concerned, she didn't already seen enough. She's already she's already made it known that as far as she's concerned, she believes that this woman actually said no to him repeatedly and that she was just so drunk. And, and, and because he was just bigger than her, there was just no way she could actively resist him or get away from him. When did she need to actively resist him when she was the one that was pulling on him? She was the one initiating the physical contact. Okay. After appearing in court on November 22nd, Mr. Wilson sat there listening to the accuser tell events of the night. Mr. Wilson watched on. His attorney, Forrest Laurie, began to cross-examine the accuser. It was after his cross-examination and asking the accuser if force was directly used that Mr. Wilson's charges were changed from one count to two counts after Amy McGowan requested a short recess. So see, this was on the 22nd. This was on the 22nd when, you know, they realized, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. We got surveillance showing her being aggressive with him and showing her initiating contact with him on the dance floor. So we might not be able to get a guilty verdict of rape for that. So we got to add another rape charge. See, we got to add another rape charge. And that's when the second rape charge came. In asking the judge to dismiss the charges against his client, Laurie said, there's no evidence that she was forced to do this. Laurie said the team continued to stay with Wilson in the bar and to his home and had the presence of mind to communicate with him. But now remember, she's just supposed to be so drunk. She's just stumbling all over everything and she just don't know what she's doing because she's just so drunk. In cross and in, in cross examination, the teen, the teen, Lowry asked her whether Wilson forced or threatened her. He pleaded not guilty. The judge scheduled his trial for April the third, third the thirtieth, and this would have been April the thirtieth, two thousand eighteen. April the thirtieth, two thousand eighteen. Sperry Digliozzi, hired by the district attorney's office, said he interviewed the woman and people she was, cl she was close with in early 2018. He diagnosed her with post-traumatic stress disorder mm. with very serious symptoms. 
persisting even at the time of his evaluation, more than a year after the incident. She remained, uh, she maintained stellar grades in high school, and then she went on to go to college out of state, he said, but because of unhealthily, unhealthily throwing herself into schoolwork to cope. He said her mental health and family and friend relationships deteriorated. He said she had reoccurring nightmares, could not function in crowds at school, couldn't sleep, and had continuing panic attacks, among other problems. And all of this came from what? What, what, what did all what, what what did this traumatic stress syndrome come from? What did this disorder come from? What 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 did what it, it came from? A, a non rape from non sexual activity with somebody. What did it come from? It came from two people kissing and maybe a touch on a on a crowded dance floor. What what did it come from? Because there was no evidence whatsoever of any sexual intercourse. He said he didn't have sex with her. And on here you never hear her say that they had sex. So where did the, 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 the post-traumatic stress disorder come from? Okay, let's continue. In addition, Mr. Wilson's trial is pushed back to a later date. So we don't get this April 30th trial. January the 7th, 2019, the trial begins, <laughs> the trial begins almost a year after, almost a year after it was scheduled to, tr to, to begin. The, the trial begins with jury selection on January the 17th. Mr. Wilson is up against an all-white jury. So he was not up against a jury of his peers. Because a jury of his peers would have included somebody black. At least one black man. But he has an all white jury. Which consists of nine white women. And three white men. And the prosecutor in this case was Amy McGowan. And if you if, if you come to this web this website and you look through all the pages and you you know you hit all the little buttons and links and everything, you'll find out that this Amy McGowan woman has had her share of troubles in the courtroom. January 8, 2019, throughout the day, Amy, Amy McGowan gave her opening statements and the accuser and witnesses took the stand. Um, she claims that she was stumbling and didn't have control of herself and that she hadn't been drunk like that before. She was stumbling and didn't have control of herself, but she could pull him into the, into the, into the boom, boom room with her. When <coughs> Wilson then approached her inside the bar, she said, and they started talking and moved to another area away from her cousin. He kissed her and then assaulted her, she said, in the bar. Wilson then asked the woman if she wanted to come to, to his place and spend the night. She refused, telling him she needed to find her cousin. But Wilson persisted and convinced her to come with him outside to call her cousin. But the woman said that instead of stopping outside the bar, Wilson led her to his house, which was a few blocks away. She said she was too drunk to realize what was going on and that she did not know where they were going and was concentrating on her feet to make sure she was walking correctly. The woman laughed in court when describing how she could not walk straight but when she began recounting how Wilson led her to his room, her demeanor sharply changed. She struggled to keep from crying and had to take breaks during her testimony. Wilson reiterated that the girl was not drunk, that they did not have sex, and I didn't rape her. Kansas Bureau of Investigation scientists testified that while Wilson's DNA was found on the girl's chest, where he said he kissed her, no seminal fluid 
or DNA was found on her clothing or on a vaginal swab. I, I, I'll let you, you, you can read the rest because the rest is pretty much, you know, pretty much says what we already know. That, um, you know, after all these closing statements and closing arguments from the prosecution and the defense, at the end of the day, he was still found guilty of, let's, let's make sure we get this right. After six hours of, deli of deliberation, the jury finds Mr. Wilson guilty for the accusation of rape that occurred at his home but could not agree on the accusation of rape that occurred at the Hulk. So see, that's the reason why, now you understand the reason why the second count of rape was added. Was because with all the video surveillance and with all the footage and with her being the aggressor and with her continuing to deal with him, you know, even after they got off the dance floor and her actually going home with him and they walking to his house hand in hand, they knew that there was no way that they were going to be able to get a guilt. Or at least they didn't want to take the chance that they wouldn't be able to get a guilty verdict on that first count of rape, which was supposed to allegedly have happened on the dance floor in the boom boom room. But because once they get to his house, there are no more videos, there is no more surveillance, and now it's his word against hers, they knew. That if they got that all white jury, especially with all white women, they knew that they would get a, a guilty verdict for that. So that's the reason why that second count of rape was added during his preliminary hearing. Was because even, even a jury of women looking at that could possibly look at that and say, well, wait a minute, wait a minute. Look how she acting with him. You know what I'm saying? She the one pulling all over him. She the one walking hand in hand with him from the bar to his house. And according to this, on surveillance camera, nowhere was she seen stumbling when she was walking. So it was just too iffy with that first count. There was just too much of a possibility that they just might not guilt that guilty verdict. So that's the reason why that second count of rape was added to say that he raped her at his house. Because, see, there was no surveillance there. And when you go up in court, and especially when you got an all-white jury, and, and nine of them are, are white women, and what you got is a black man's word against a white woman's word, okay, well, we already know what's going to happen there. We already know what's going to happen. So I just wanted to add to add some facts, you know what I'm saying? And then the, and then we go back to, you know, they they will make it out on the bed and, 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 you know, he gets this text from his friend and he decides to call his friend back and he decides, you know, he needs to go check in on his friend and she gives him this mean, mad look or whatever. So, you know, there's always that possibility that maybe she's maybe she did get pissed because, you know, he didn't follow through or whatever. I think it's more, I think it had more to do with the whole family scenario. You know what I'm saying? She back with the cousin, the cousin talking junk. Then she goes home and, and, and somehow another her and her mama end up talking about it. And then after her and her mama end up talking about it, bam, all of a sudden she ends up in the hospital. Having a vaginal swab. A vaginal swab that proves nothing. Right. A vaginal swab that proves nothing happened. That they didn't have sex. Then you got them actually alone for only five minutes. Then you got her saying that she was just so drunk. You know, she was just so intoxicated. She didn't know where she was. She didn't know what was going on. She didn't know what was happening, you know, and all of that. But yet she's, cons she, she, she's aware enough to keep repeatedly telling him no. You know, and this time, this breaks it down in time, in minutes. 
it breaks it down. It breaks it down. Like, why? you know, what we need to understand is, you know, why did it take two and a half years, almost two and a half years for you to bring this man to trial? Why did it take almost two and a half years? From the, from the, from the time of the incident, why did it take almost two and a half years? He was charged on... Let's make sure we get this right. He was charged on October the 11th, 2017. He was supposed to go to trial April the 30th, 2018. The trial didn't actually begin until January 2019. What took so long? <sighs> So this was just a little update I wanted to bring. I wanted to bring you this information. I wanted to provide you with this link so that you could go in. You could see the breakdown yourself. You you could read the little extra um, information yourself about some things that were said about the you know the friend making the telephone calls about all of this video surveillance that they had because the only video surveillance they talk about in the other two articles is the fact that you know surveillance shows that they were only at his house for five minutes. That they were only at his house for five minutes. Those two articles don't talk about all this other video surveillance. All the surveillance of them, you know, and the video of them actually interacting inside the bar. Actually leaving the bar together hand in hand. When they actually came back to the bar. Now, by the time they came back, they weren't hand in hand anymore. You know, it's very, very possible that the text message he got from the friend, it, you know, could have could have been a warning. You know, bro, you know, maybe you need to, you know, maybe you need to step back. Maybe you need to chill. You don't know this chick. Because it's mighty funny that, you know, he stopped whatever he was doing or whatever he was planning to do and decided, OK, let me go see what my friend needs. But, you know, that's all speculation. But nothing else is speculation because they're breaking it down here. I mean, they're really breaking it down. Minute by minute. And with this breakdown, it makes even less sense. But we do know now it, this, this is this also wasn't in the other two articles that they added a set that they added a second count of, of rape so we know now why they felt like it was necessary to add a second count of rape and just as they thought after six hours of deliberation the jury finds him guilty of the accusation of rape at his home but they couldn't agree on the accusation of rape that supposedly occurred at the Hawk when they were kissing and he supposedly touched her and assaulted her. Why? Because there was too much surveillance. There was entirely too much surveillance. There was entirely too much proof of the interaction and proof that she was down for, for what was going on, that she was actually the aggressor of what was going on. So that's the reason why they had to come up with another count. They had to they had to finally get it to that place where it was pitted his word against hers. Because once they got them in that position where it was his word against hers, well, quite naturally, we already know whose word is going to be believed. So, again, I just wanted to bring you this information. I wanted to provide you with this link. Um, I wanted to let you know that there is um, a link on here and within this website where you can donate because I'm sure they're trying to get up enough money so that they maybe can get him a real lawyer and appeal this mess. Please share this link. Again, share this story, share the original uh, video so that we can get this out there. And he can get whatever help he needs 
to appeal this and have this overturned because this is ridiculous. This is absolutely ridiculous. Somebody facing 12 years in prison for rape and they haven't had sex with anybody. There's no evidence of any force. There's no evidence of, 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 of any actual sexual intercourse. There's, there's no DNA. There's no seminal fluid. No nothing. So please share this link. Please like. Please subscribe. Please share this video. Please comment. Let's make this go viral. If you want to support the channel, the, the, the PayPal link is there for that as well. It'll be in the description box. This link to, 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 to www.freealbertwilson.com will be in the description box. And it's also in the description box for the previous video, the first video that we did on him. So please share this. Please, please like, please share. Y'all have a good night and we'll bring you more when we get it.